yo guys, what's up? Welcome to today's video. We're here in Daji and now we're going to the Keelong River to do some water monitoring with our volunteer team here. Uh, this is Fox, that's Kevin right there, and this is Kim, our new team member. So we'll be showing you what our volunteer team does, which is monitoring the water and then reporting it back to the Taipei city government. So now we're going to go there and I'll see you guys later. Yo guys, we're here at the venue of the water monitoring and we have our bikes. We just got down from the bridge right there. Uh, so now we're going to take our bikes right down to below the bridge and then do our first water monitoring test uh, right there. So I'll see you guys there. Yo guys, we're here at the first stop. Uh, Fox is setting up some of our equipment. So we'll show you guys uh, what we do later. But first, uh, let's show you guys where we came from. So uh, you guys can see up here is a big bridge. Uh, we came from the Da Zhi Chuan, uh, MRT station, which is around this place, uh, right behind the bridge. So we just uh, came out of the MRT, walked over there to borrow our uh, bikes, and then we rode our bikes over to here. Uh, so as you guys can see, there is a red bucket here, uh, which we will use to fill up the water. Okay, so here we have the bucket which will be used to fill our river water and very, very long line tied on it to throw it out there uh, as middle as possible so that you don't get the dirt and gravel uh, which is going to pollute uh, your final um, results uh, which is not going to be great. And then after that you just step out and try not to fall in the water because that's going to be bad and just uh, kind of like smooth out your lines and or you can do something like uh, roll it on your elbow or your forearm so that it becomes a loop. Okay, so we have all of our line wound up here in a beautiful um, bundle. So you want to take your head and make sure you have that secure or the entire bucket's going to fly out of your hand. And then you just take the entire, entire wind and as if you're throwing uh, like a stone or a catapult or something, uh, just uh, find your own way to power it up as much as possible and then throw it out. Okay, so as far as possible, like there is good because it's deeper so that it won't get any uh, dirt and gravel. And just gently tug on it and then it's going to sink down to the bottom and get some of that water. If it doesn't, if it floats on top, just tug on it so it can uh, collect some of the water. And when you pull it up, make sure it doesn't hit any of the walls. Uh, if it hits, it's, not, uh, it's no problem as long as it doesn't break. Because uh, the bucket that we're using was actually used for a popcorn, so it's quite fragile. So we have to be careful when we do this. And if you hit the wall too many times, the water is going to splash out. Okay, so after you have the water here, you want to take your water monitoring kit. And if the camera can zoom in to this sticker right here, you can see that it was produced for Water Monitoring Day. If you guys want some more information, you guys can check out uh, their website. Of course, this is a very, very simple and it can't uh, make very much uh, detailed results. So what we're doing is we're just seeing if the water has any problems. If it does, we'll tell the uh, Environmental Bureau in the Taipei City Government and they will have more uh, professional people and more professional tools to come test the water and decide on how they should solve this problem. So now let's take it open and show you guys what's inside. Okay, so here you can see we have all of our tools that we need. We have this small bottle for filling our water. So inside there's a sticker. This is used to check for the turbidity of the water, which is right here. So the turbidity means how much sand and gravel and pollutants are inside. The more there is, the harder it is to see the sticker. So we will know uh, probably after a wind, after a rain or a storm or a typhoon, there's an extra turbidity because after the typhoon, all of the dirt and gravel and sand under the riverbed has been washed up. And then this is uh, some of the information we can use uh, to see whether or not the weather uh, formations have changed over the past few days or few years. And then this is a very simple uh, temperature uh, sticker. It uh, has a chemical reaction to the weather. As you guys can see, it is winter, so it is very cold, 16 degrees. But if I put my finger on it and rub it around, it's going to move up the scale because of my body temperature. So like, as you guys can see, my body temperature is around 22, 20 temperatures, uh, 22 or 20 degrees, which is still quite cold, but that's because I don't have any gloves on, so it can't keep the warmth in. And then the two other values we test for is dissolved oxygen and uh, the acidity level. So for dissolved oxygen, we will be using this small 
uh, tube and then also two uh, tablets of the DO and then for the acidity we will be using this long tube and one of these uh, pills okay guys so we just completed our testing uh, and also our charting so you guys can see there are two tubes here one short and one long the long one is to test the pH water levels, uh, the acidity, so now it's around 7 or 8. Uh, so that means it's neutral, which is great, because if it's neutral, it's not too uh, acid, acid or not too base for the fishes and the sea creatures uh, to live inside. So if it's too acid, it could be from uh, the factory wastewater or also our uh, home use wastage. But if it's too base, it could be uh, because of the soaps or detergents used in the home or because of the natural natural salt minerals inside of the oceans and then so our water here in the Keelong River is very natural very healthy and very great and then the dissolved oxygen uh, shows how much oxygen there is inside uh, uh, the water so you guys can see now it's around 4 ppm so the ppm is the unit that they use to calculate the dissolved oxygen if it's zero, there's very little to no oxygen at all, which is going to be bad uh, for the water creatures. Uh, if there's four, that means it's around normal. If it's eight, it's uh, a lot or almost even too much. Why? Because if there's no water, the, uh, the aquatic creatures can't survive. But if there's too much, there's going to be uh, some uh, aquatic-based plants or weeds that's going to uh, suck away all of the oxygen so that the aquatic creatures can't live inside anymore. And then after that, we have the turbidity. As you guys can see, there's 0, 40, and 100 JTU. What we use, as I said before, is to see uh, the weather changes. So you can see uh, right now it's around 40 JTU, somewhere around that. And then aside from that, we will see uh, the water temperature. So as I said, there's a paper thermometer down there. So you just uh, plop it into the water. And after around 30 seconds, take it out. And you can see that it's pretty similar because it's pretty quite cold. So the water can't really get colder much. But it's around 14, 16, probably 15, uh, somewhere that range. So after we do all of this testing, we will note it down in this book. Thank Fox for holding this for me. So if the camera can zoom in, you can see that we need to write down uh, testers name and where we're testing this, results, uh, what date and time it is, how fast the water is, if there's any gravel down there, if there's any uh, wastage or trash or anything uh, on or below the water surface. So what we saw today is very interesting. It's a bicycle. And if the camera can come over here, uh, you can see down there, right there, is a actual bicycle that has been buried down there, like uh, underwater treasure. It's pretty cool, but uh, very not uh, eco as well. So we're going to tell uh, the government uh, officials to come and have someone take it up and have it recycled properly. Now, after the other chart, which is going to chart down all of the basic uh, detailed information of our test results, so the date, uh, the temperature of the air and then uh, which river we're testing at and uh, which part of the river. So here is under the Daji Chow, which is right here. If the camera can look up, we came from the Daji MRT station and this is the actual bridge. Now after that, we can see back here, this is the uh, looking of the water. So we can see the waves are kind of fast, not too fast, but still pretty fast all days. And then this is the water color, which is dark green, so we just note that down. Uh, the water temperature, and all of the oxygen, the pH levels, and then the JTU. So as you guys can see, all of these values are pretty normal for a day, winter day, so cold, but the water is looking pretty good. So that means we have a great, great water system, and thank you for the Taipei City government for keeping our water safe and clean for us to drink. And that brings an end to this video. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.